Hi again everyone, Chris Tisdell here again. In this video I'm going to continue my series of presentations on partial differential equations. Now in the previous video we looked at second order linear partial differential equations with purely uh, second order terms, okay, and, and the coefficients were constant. Okay, and we learned how to classify and solve them. In this presentation we're going to look at the slightly uh, more general problem where you allow first order, say first order derivatives into the mix and the coefficients may not necessarily be constant, they could be functions. Okay, now um, the actual ideas are, are, are the same as, as essentially as the just the purely second order problems that we looked at in the previous video. So it's not a big jump from, from that kind of problem to this kind of problem. Okay, so what, what were those ideas? Well, you look at the discriminant involving the coefficients of the first three terms, which feature purely second order derivatives. If the uh, discriminant type expression is positive, then you term your PDE as hyperbolic. If it's negative, we term the PDE as elliptic. And lastly, if the discriminant is zero, then we term our PDE as parabolic. Now a good question is where do these terms come from? This, this sort of reminds you of a hyperbola, this reminds you of an ellipse, and this reminds you of a parabola, so curves in the, in the plane. Well, let me give you a few examples, um, and to, to sort of give you the general idea, let's compare 7 with, uh, this is uh, like a quadric or quadratic form, so basically you scrub out all the u's and you write the subscripts as uh, independent variables. So the u sub xx would become x times x, x squared. Okay, this would become x times y. This would become y squared. And you just continue along. Okay, so if we have a, b, c, etc. all constants, then this is uh, a general form known as a, as a quadric or quadratic form. Okay, so to give you a little bit of definiteness, let's consider um, the following PDE. And this is going to be just an inhomogeneous PDE, but it doesn't matter. Okay, so um, here A would be 1, B would be 0, C would be 2. And if you work out your discriminant, you'll see that um, the PDE is elliptic, okay, because you'll get a negative discriminant. So let's compare this with the, this type of form now. So this would be a x squared, this would be a 2y squared, and you'd have the 1 on the end. What kind of curve is this? This is an ellipse. Okay, so there's a connection right there. Let's do another one. Um, let's do a hyperbolic one. Again, just you know, uh, inhomogeneous. So here A would be 1, B would be 0 again, and C would be negative 1. So if you work out your discriminant, you're going to get a positive value. So this means it's hyperbolic. Oops, sorry. Hyperbolic. Okay. So in the, the curve kind of setting, this would become x squared, this would become y squared equals 1. Well, that is a hyperbola. All right, so that's a connection with where the names of these PDEs come from. Okay, let's do some examples. we are asked to classify the following PDEs. Now, in the first PDE, 
all the coefficients are constant, okay? And if, in particular, coefficients of the second, purely second order derivatives are constants. So it'll either be one of these three cases. In the second example, some of the coefficients are constant and some of them are functions, they're variables. So in the second case, um, we, may have, we, we may find that this happens at one set of points, this happens at another set of points, and this happens at a third set of points. Okay, so the case when the coefficients are not constant can be trickier than um, when, the, when the coefficients are constant. Okay, so let's, um, uh, let's call this A and B, and we'll just work, work through them. All right, so if we compare this PDE with this PDE, all we're really interested in is A, B, and C. We don't really care about the other terms. Okay, so A is 1, B is positive 3, and, oh, sorry, A is 1, B is 0, because there's no mixed derivative term there, and C equals positive 3. Okay, so let's test our discriminant. Zero minus four times that times that, so negative twelve. It's negative, and therefore our PDE is elliptic everywhere. Okay. Now for part B, it's a little, little bit more work. So here A would be Y, B would be negative 4, and C would be positive 4X. Okay, so let's work out our discriminant. Okay, so we're going to get uh, 16 minus 4 times that times that, so minus 16 xy. And so the, the sign, I guess, is dependent on the sign of this 1 minus xy. Okay. So let's discuss the, the different cases here. Okay, well, this is going to be positive when 1 minus xy is going to be positive. So that means when xy is less than 1. Okay, similarly this will be negative when 1 minus xy is negative. Okay, so that, that means that that's the case when xy is greater than 1. That will be 0 when xy equals 1. So essentially, uh, essentially the uh, the Analysis then revolves around basically the, the curve y equals 1 on x. Okay, so in, in this case, you're going to have a hyperbolic um, PDE. In this case, you're going to have an elliptic. And in this case, you're going to have a parabolic. Okay, so I'm just going to sketch the, the set of points where each of these things occur. Okay, so... Right, so I'm going to draw in the curve y equals 1 on x. Okay, so here, let, let, let's, let's think about the hyperbolic case. Here we want y is less than 1 on x. Okay, now that's going to be the following region. Okay, this is, this is the curve, or well, this is the curve y equals 1 on x. Okay, so in here, it's going to be hyperbolic. Okay. Now, for this case, in the elliptic, the points where the PD uh, is elliptic are the point, set of points where y is greater than 1 on x. Okay. So, again, draw the line y or the curve y equals 1 on x. 
it's going to be here. And finally, the curve when the point, points are on the curve y equals 1 on x, that's where the PDE is parabolic. Okay, so in, in these, di in these uh, diagrams, we're not including these curves in our set of points. Okay. Okay, hopefully you can see that okay. Okay, so there are the three regions uh, that essentially have sets of points where we can classify the PDE as hyperbolic, elliptic, or parabolic. Okay, now wh why would we want to go to the trouble to classify these kinds of equations? Well, we saw that with purely second order problems that the, um, the solutions differed greatly between hyperbolic, elliptic, and parabolic. Okay, and this is true in general. Um, and, and a guide, I guess, is taken if you compare an ellipse with a hyperbola, they're very different. Okay, and you could argue that comparing these uh, solutions of an elliptic PDE with a hyperbolic PDE will also be very, very different. So that's another motivation for classifying these kinds of problems. I hope you found this presentation useful. Uh, please join me again for more videos on PDE in the future.